but um, that's, that's a perception and that's what we need to do, both, both internally and externally. We have to work on that and there's a lot to be done. I think one of the things that strikes me in hearing these two remarkable young people is that the Atkin Fellowship requires courage. I think what has been so extraordinary is that young people come and are prepared to, we heard this morning that the Arab-Israeli dispute is really about identity, a sense of identity. These are some of the most difficult uh, things to, to question or to examine. Uh, they, they deal with some of the things that are most fundamental to our own sense of who we are. And the purpose of the Atkin Fellowship is not to change people in the sense, it's not to brainwash anybody, it's not to transform things. It's in many ways, it's kind of a leap of faith a belief that if you bring people together, somehow they will grow. They will still be the same extraordinary people they are, but perhaps they will uh, be able to, to be closer to that wonderful and elusive goal of wisdom. Uh, it's easy to be smart, but being wise is so much harder. And it is a step towards wisdom, towards being able to take what you know and see it in, in a broader context. And I must say, I'm deeply moved to hear what you have to say. I know we all are full of the very best wishes for all of these wonderful young leaders to go back to their countries, to go back to their region, and to continue to play a wonderful role. And I know I, that you will all join me in expressing your appreciation to them, to all of them, to our two wonderful representatives, and to Celia and Edward Atkin, who had the vision to make it possible that these are the leaders of tomorrow. And I know that I will sleep better tonight knowing that they're here. Thank you very much.